All right. I'm Simon Dedeo. I'm faculty at Carnegie Mellon University here in Pittsburgh and also at the Santa Fe Institute. It's a pleasure to uh, take this opportunity to tell you about my favorite lines of code. This is the code in question. It's uh, off a disk that I had on my Apple IIe back in the 1980s. It's a deceptively simple piece of code. It came on a, uh, a set of games that were associated with Sesame Street Children's Television Workshop. You can see what it's doing here. It's asking you questions. But not only is it trying to figure out what's in your head, it's also dynamically building representations of the world around it. You could say this is my first encounter with an artificial intelligent agent. If you've been following what's on the screen here, you can see how far we've gotten. The game, or the piece of code, has been reasonably successful in guessing what's in the contents of your brain, but now it's encountered something from a less innocent time, from the 21st century. In particular, it's encountered verb mean. And at this point, what it's trying to do is it's trying to reconcile its own internal representation of the world with the one you have. It's trying to figure out, it's asking you how it can distinguish, given what it has in its own set of representations, what you possess in yours. And in doing so, it hopes, and I think this time it will get it, uh, it hopes to produce a distinguishing feature of a pigeon versus a bird meme. In fact, apparently a bird meme will not attack the memes that will allow it to understand how things work around it. This is the 21st century version of Animal, no longer running on an Apple IIe, although it is running right now on a Macintosh. I've coded this up for you in Ruby. You know exactly how this works. I've seeded it with a single question pair. Does the animal have two legs or not? The machine currently believes that if it has two legs, it has to be a human being. And if it has four, or rather if it fails to have two legs, it has to be a dog. The uh, machine will, of course, ask you these questions until it gets to a leaf in its knowledge. And once it gets to a leaf, if it has the wrong answer, it will ask you to help it further construct this tree. Now, in the modern era, we don't actually have people simply ask yes-no questions uh, to each other and build the trees. We have them inducted dynamically by some sort of magical machine learning process. And when we do that, we call them decision trees. If we're feeling really punchy, we'll have a whole bunch of decision trees competing against each other, in which case they're a forest. And I think uh, at the end of this all, if you just make them all sort of jumbled up decision trees and together, then you get a random forest and apparently the trees vote against each other and battle back and forth. That's all beside the point, of course, because fundamentally this is a representation of the world. It's a binary representation of the world. And in that sense, while we tend to think of computers as uh, uh, being binary in the ways in which they encode information on a hard drive, really the fundamental discovery, and this goes all the way back to Gödel, was that you can translate any form of knowledge into a sequence of digits. And of course, the most simple sequence of digits that we can imagine, or the simplest set of digits we can imagine selecting from, are 0 and 1, yes or no. Let's go to the full screen. Uh, you can see I was trying to impress you guys here and write this in Lisp, but unfortunately my, my Lisp powers have decayed finally into senescence, so I've really got nothing I can do for you here. We'll swap over to the Ruby code that I prepared earlier. I have a pretty sophisticated IDE that I run. Uh, it has uh, a uh, copy and paste function here as well as select all, so let's boot that up. Um, you can see actually in the top here, I've already created a initial seeding of knowledge of the world for this creature, and now we're running. So it really has only two ideas, that things can have two legs or not two legs, and if it has two, it's a human being. But unfortunately, in this case, the machine has an impoverished model of the world, and it doesn't know that if you have two legs, you might in fact be a bird meme. So it interrogates the agent, it asks this other intelligent creature in the world what distinguishes these two things that it didn't know had a distinction to be made. And now you can see, having dynamically updated its representations, it's able to move forward, reinterrogate the world, and hopefully learn something new. Let's have the machine re-encounter the world one more time. In this case, it's a creature without memetic powers, but also not a human being. So obviously that's got to be, I don't know, like a sparrow, right? Okay. And uh, what distinguishes a sparrow from humans and bird memes, obviously there's uh, something very dull about it. So well done to us. Um, and 
Here you can see, in particular, the underlying mental representation that the machine has constructed over and above the one that I've seeded it with. There's just one last thing to ask. And that's the question of how the machine might dynamically not only update its representations, but attempt to consolidate them, to produce some kind of account of the world that's not only accurate, but somehow better representative, compressed. I understand we'll have Kamalgarov complexity right afterwards. This is like the baby version of Kamalgarov complexity. And of course, it's known as Huffman encoding. So if you take that old uh, representation that you built years and years ago with your Apple IIe and the children's television workshop Sesame Street diskette, if you took that representation and then you went to, you know, graduate school or something, uh, you'd be able to find that tree, to take that tree, and of course you saw another linked list version of it being built in, in Ruby. I actually have no idea how these people back in the 1980s wrote this. I think they must have used integer basic, which is a terrifying thought to have to do this with integer basic. Um, Self-modifying code, God forbid. But uh, what you can do is take that linked list and given in particular some knowledge of the probabilities with which you were encounter these different animals, rearrange the set of questions. And so now, for example, instead of beginning with, does it have two legs versus not two legs, you might say, does it have mimetic powers? Because in fact, 99% of the time, the person is thinking of something in the meme class. So by rearranging the tree, you can produce a representation of the world that will navigate, that will enable your Apple IIe or your Ruby code to navigate the world more effectively. So uh, it's a pleasure, obviously, to uh, join you virtually. Thank you, Brennan, for, for uh, making this possible. And uh, perhaps the last thing, we'll, we'll uh, cover this on Thursday, but uh, one last piece of, of, uh, of information about this wonderful chunk of code that I, I was able to recreate for you almost live is the fact that we know something about those most efficient representations, even in the absence of actually constructing them. We know in particular how efficient they can be, some kind of maximal efficiency. And that's, of course, the Shannon entropy of the underlying universe in which the creature is navigating and which it is learning from. Thank you, and I'll see you all soon.